KUAM News Hotspot is brought to you by Pacific Points, Do More, Get More, and Calvo Enterprises, Inc. The Menu, brought to you by King's Restaurant, always open, always local, and Ruby Tuesday Guam, home of the fresh garden bar. We are working with our federal partners. To 2023 marks the official end of the public health emergency. As the governor declared, it was all over on January 6. What can we look forward to then in this post-pandemic economy? We talked with Dr. Maria Claret Ruwain, a macroeconomics expert from the University of Guam, who's released her personal annual report on the state of Guam's economy. Some of the highlights, Guam's unemployment rate, which peaked at 19.4% in December of 2020, dropped to just 4.8% in June 2022. But, and this is a big but, the number of employable individuals who don't participate in the labor force remains at a very high 54,200. Private sector employment was still 7.5% below pre-pandemic levels. Only three industries, agriculture, construction, and manufacturing, have returned to or exceeded their pre-COVID baselines. Inflation was kept manageable at 1.7% and 3.8% in 2020 and 2021, respectively, but increased drastically, as it did across the nation, to 6.2% during the first nine months of 2022. In our top private sector industry, tourism, Guam saw almost 217,000 visitors, beating forecasts of 130,000. But Dr. Ruane still points out that we are years away from returning to our pre-pandemic record of 1.63 million visitors in 2019. Overall, Guam's growth rate of 1.1% in 21 is a big improvement over the 11.4% drop in 2020, but Guam's economy remains 10% below what it was before the COVID crisis emerged. All right, half a day, everyone. And we are joined by the author of the 2022 Guam Economic Report, Dr. Maria Claret Ruwain of the University of Guam. Half a day, Claret. Half a day, Nestor. Thank you for having me here. Happy New Year to you. Happy New Year to the KUAM team, to our island of Guam. Uh, I'm happy New to Year. be here. Thank you so yeah. much. Happy New Year. Hopefully we have some good news from you. <laughs> well, uh, so um, I, yeah, we'll, we'll just, get into that. But I, Nestor, I wanted to clarify, though, that uh, just like last year, the report was written uh, as a private citizen. Uh, part of it is a logistic issue. I usually <laughs> write these reports very close to New Year's Eve. And there's you, uh, no time for um, my uh, my administrators at UOG to read and approve. And I don't like to delay these reports. So I do want them out uh, pretty much on New Year's Eve. So just All to right. clarify. Thank you. Absolutely. All right. So just wanted to start off with just uh, getting your overall key points of this uh, report. Um, well, uh, it's a 2022 economic report, but, you know, it does give a bit of history. It certainly goes back to 2021, some references to that. And obviously, it goes back to the beginning of the pandemic in 2020. So it's a multi-year report to some extent. I wanted to start with the following, that uh, the overall, uh, I did not give any numerical uh, estimation for 2022 and a forecast for this year we just started. But I just wanted to say the main theme is that our economy is recovering, has been recovering since 2021. Uh, so that's a good that's 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 good to note. Uh, but it's not fully recovered. OK, so, of course, we're about one year behind in terms of the and I'm referring mostly to the macro uh, to the large picture picture data. The latest we have is still for 2021. So we don't have a read on 2022 until late this year. Uh, uh, but I'm hoping to see, as everybody else is hoping to see, a positive growth and hopefully um, a relatively stronger one. But uh, I did, you know, I, I, I can't put a number. Let's put it that way. So the, the theme is we have recovered uh, starting from 2021, but not fully recovered yet. You see it. And obviously the tourism sector is still well, well below. You see it in the employment, the sources of employment by industry. Uh, there is one graph uh, uh, that I invite our viewers to to read from the report where the employment, there's only three uh, industries where uh, employment has actually recovered or passed. 
the pre-pandemic level. Everything else is still below. Tourism is actually about 29% still below in terms of in ter terms of employment. All right. I wanted to dig deeper into each of those uh, main sections and um, let's start with uh, the growth rate. You said you can't really peg it at this point, but you did in your report say uh, in 21, Guam's economy resumed a positive growth rate of 1.1% after decreasing by 114 in 2020, of course, that was due primarily to the pandemic. Can you talk a little bit about the growth rate? Yes, uh, that, that ended up being the growth rate of 1.1%. So we did grow. Uh, I was hoping for more. Uh, when we spoke a year ago, my estimation, uh, you know, the uh, as, as well as I could put it together, I was very surprised. My number was really, really off, was really, really high at 26%. So uh, even during our conversation, I questioned whether is could this be happening? You know, is this possible? I've seen it. Uh, I've seen a turnaround like that in the U.S. Uh, during the pandemic. So that, you know, they talked about a V-shaped recovery where there's a big decline and then there's a big recovery. Uh, I, di I didn't see that happening with us. The recovery for us was just officially right now uh, uh, at one point for 2019, need to clarify again, was only 1.1%. Um, just as a reminder though, that even this official estimate can be revised and updated. Uh, it could be in the next three or four years. So uh, uh, just judging from earlier years, the 2018 report has been revised about four times every, you know, it was released in 2019 and then every year since then it's been revised. So at some point the revisions or, you know, the changes are getting smaller and smaller. So the 1.1% is officially our measure for 2019. Um, as I said, I wish it was higher, uh, but it, it it is something to think about. Um, uh, and I do have some explanation for why uh, I would have expected it to be higher, and it turned out not to be at this point. All right. We're going to take a short break, and we'll be back with more of our conversation with Dr. Uh, Claret and her Guam Economic Report for 2022. All right. Okay, and we're back with uh, Dr. Maria Claret Ruane from the University of Guam. And uh, Dr. Claret, I wanted to kind of focus now on uh, prices and inflation, that section of your report. All right. Well, I mean, um, uh, forecasting from last year, we're expecting inflation to be higher this year. Uh, I Again, uh, this is, I'm sorry to have so much joy in, you know, in confirming that my forecast actually came true. Although if it's not good numbers, I'd rather not see it. Believe me, I'd rather be wrong. But uh, the last time we spoke a year ago, uh, I was forecasting inflation to run about 6%, 6% or higher uh, for the year that just ended, 2022. Um, uh, as far as the information I have, I only have up to the third quarter of last year. And we are running at an average of 6.2%. Uh, again, this is not new information for a lot of us. Uh, you know, We've seen the numbers, which I, I love to, to see, although not this high inflation number. Uh, we experience it obviously as we hit the store, we gas up our cars. So it's you know it's not just numbers for the for numbers' sake. It it is our life, and things have become really expensive. Um, so um, what's the expectation for next year? Well, I mean uh, a lot of it is driven by fuel cost. So at least the good news is that from the summer last year, fuel costs had been decreasing. Uh, in the U.S. and also here on Guam, uh, I think one of the charts I showed was about mid. June, our uh, our uh, the lowest grade, the uh, lowest octane for gas price was six forty nine per gallon. So since then, of course, you know it helped that we uh, had a waiver on the liquid uh, the liquid fuel tax, which just got extended until April, I believe, this year. And also that uh, you know we got some breaks with uh, uh, our power our power cost. So uh, so I'd like to, I hope inflation will go down this year. Um, uh, just uh, if that is the trend that it's headed to, keep in mind, again, some of the waivers are temporary. So after April, what would happen? Um, uh, also, keep in mind that uh, a little bit of the break we got, inflation could have been worse, if not for the, I think, 14 or $15 million uh, from the ARPA money that uh, the Office of the Governor uh, gave GPA uh, to delay the rate increase. So, so it's not always good news. There was a paragraph in my report that talked about the experience has been a combination of good news and bad news. We could always get it even worse than we did 
but I'm sure, you know, things could always be better. Uh, we always welcome it to be better. So uh, I don't have a numerical forecast for inflation this year. Um, um, judging from also the effect of the U.S. inflation, we import 50 to 60 percent from the U.S. Their inflation has also been de decreasing since the summer. So at least CPI now, consumer price index inflation in the U.S. is down to 7.1 percent in November. It was as high as 9 percent in June of last year. So there seems to be a downward trend that way. Um, uh, there's the other factor, which is the price that producers pay or businesses pay, uh, wholesale prices. And that also, that actually topped at 11.7% in March of last year. And uh, as of November, it's down to 7.4. So there, there's some indication that the, there is downward movement uh, in, in some of, you know, the prices of where we bring our, our stuff from. So uh, it's not a scientific, I mean, it's more really that I hope that our inflation would not be higher than this year's inflation, which is about 6.2% where it's at right now. Yeah, so your feeling is that it 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 should go down, but you're not quite sure how 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 much by how much and how long it will take. Yeah, I, I'm not sure about that. Um, I know there are efforts by the Federal Reserve in the U.S. to try to bring inflation down, and it's the effect is kicking in if it is very very slowly. So uh, this is not good news. But if the forecast for the U.S. is a recession next year, uh, one. I'm going to use quote, one benefit of a recession is it does slow spending and uh, slow down prices. Uh, at the same time, what counters that if there's additional spending that's happening in the economy? So yeah. you're trying to slow down spending, but if you're introducing more spending, it kind of defeats yeah. the purpose. It's, yeah, it's, it's I mean, always quite it's always quite the balancing act. Wanted to move on to uh, to employment. You mentioned that there's a, there's only uh, two or three um, industries that, that saw any movement upward. Uh, can you go into the details on that? Yes, um, just uh, summarizing this on table two, um, I have that in front of me. So I did try to look at uh, year to year changes in, in, in employment in the different industries, but also ultimately compared uh, the latest that we have is for June 2022. So ultimately, the last uh, uh, column there you'll see is I compared the June 2022 report with June 2019, trying to keep the months the same because, you know, months and quarters behave a certain way, their seasonality. So I'm trying to do the comparison as accurately as possible. So the June 2019 is, uh, uh, to some extent, that would be a, be a benchmark for pre-pandemic. And so um, um, with the three industries, uh, one is not surprising to us, construction has actually been growing <laughs> even during the pandemic, 22% in, uh, in 2020, 11.5% uh, uh, in 2021, and then uh, the, the year that just ended, 12.5%. So if you look at that uh, employment and construction uh, in mid of last year compared to before the pandemic three years ago, uh, we're up 53% there. So again, not a surprise construction happening, uh, you know, in, on the civilian side, but also on the military side uh, would be captured there. Uh, the other industry is manufacturing. Um, I don't have a breakdown of specifically what manufacturing lines of businesses are reported in there. Uh, that's something that probably uh, I would think uh, Gary House would be a, a better person to ask. But uh, just judging from, again, what the great media reports, you know, the entrepreneurial spirit, the small businesses recovering in our economy, I'd like to thank, you know, manufacturing of different kinds of food items and, you know, different kinds of uh, even some sustainable products that I read about uh, might be uh, making, might be explaining that number. Again, I wish I could be more sure, but uh, I just have to guess ba based on, you know, just to some extent triangulating available information. And then the, the third one uh, that's increased uh, employment is uh, agriculture, uh, about 3% uh, in June 2022 compared to June 2019, uh, again, considered to be pre-pandemic. So uh, not having uh, uh, more details on that, uh, you know, I'm, I'm hoping all our efforts to try to encourage some of these productions, some of, uh, you know, some, for example, in agriculture and aquaculture as well, uh, hopefully some of these things are starting to materialize. Um, it'll be great to get a more detailed analysis on these things. I look forward to seeing them, but, uh, you know, those would be my uh, speculations at this point. In, in your report, you note that private sector employment was still down 7.5%. 
That that is correct. Um, um, and um, private sector employment is still down compared in June 2022 compared to three years earlier. Uh, there's been so the theme is uh, for 2022. There's also the economy has recovered. 2022 has been better than 2021, but still below 2019. Let's put it that way. So the private sector has uh, has uh, made a comeback. Um, um, trying to locate uh, where my number is from. So let's put it this way, from 45,860 in June 2021 to 47,200 in June 2022. So that's uh, about a 3% growth. But compared to 2019, it was 51,000. So 47,000 versus 51,000. We're still below 7.5% there. Um, um, that's one of the themes that we hear from our community, our business community, but obviously businesses employ our larger community that uh, the recovery in terms of employment has not been complete. I mean, there's still a lot of room uh, to climb, you know, to, to get back to, to the pre-pandemic level. Yep, absolutely. All right, time for another break and we'll be back with Dr. Maria Claret Ruane from the University of Guam right after this break. Okay, and we're uh, back from the break and I want to continue our discussion of the 2022 Guam Economic Report. Um, we have two main economic drivers that you noted uh, in your report. Those are tourism, of course, and uh, military spending. Let's start with tourism. Uh, what did you find out about that? I think everybody knows what's happening with tourism. Um, I, I kept that section small. We have a lot of wonderful tourism experts on island. So, uh, you know, uh, I'm sure they could uh, give better information than I did. So I focus mostly on numbers calculation. Uh, I think tourism is, uh, again, the theme is the same. In 2022, there's been a recovery. So in fact, for fiscal year 2022, uh, we welcome visitors that beat the earlier forecast. We actually welcomed uh, more than 200,000, a bit to 16,000 uh, visitors to the island, uh, about uh, 54%, 55% from the Korean market. So there's some recovery, uh, something to, to be happy about that's happening compared to 2021, where for the entire year, I think we only welcomed 61,000 visitors. But it's very tricky to go back to the one point, you know, it, it's a far cry from the 1.6 million that we welcomed in fiscal year 2019. I know the tourism experts are saying it'll still take, um, um, you know, quite quite some time to fully recover. Yeah. Do you have any insight on the spend, how much the uh, tourism, the tourists are spending now as compared to pre-pandemic? Well, um, my sources are the same as yours. So actually I do go to the exit survey uh, posted by the Guam Visitors Bureau. And uh, for obvious reasons, not having a lot of uh, visitors in the past two or three years, that uh, the latest survey that they have is still, uh, I think 2020, early in 2020. Uh, when I did the forecast though, uh, and this is very, very conservative estimation because I only tracked the on-island spend. Uh, so not none of the prepaid uh, spending. Uh, I did track that compared to last year, uh, tourist spending, uh, sorry, compared to 2021, tourist spending in 2022 is at least 200, 250 million dollars more. Now there's a bit of, so so that's good news. Uh, you know, yeah. that's what I do as a macroeconomist is track this money that comes to our island and gets circulated, gets uh, multiplied through. So so that's up. not surprising. Again, our tourism, our number of visitors have increased. Now, in terms of the military market, and again, this is just based on the GVB for, uh, the GB, GVB numbers, uh, the military market, uh, because of the Korean market had picked up, the military market comparatively, proportionately, had become smaller. And whereas my estimate last year was that market contributed about $26 uh, million uh, of spending, this year I think it's down to 20 million. The numbers are also a bit lower, not this year, I mean last year, <laughs> compared to the previous year. But uh, you know, there's some, um, some good stuff that I found from the president of GHRA that actually gave figures on the number of room uh, and nights uh, that the military brought. And I was able to, uh, I thank her for the data. I produced it in, on table five over here. So that if you look at fiscal year to date, uh, 2022, that is up to April, 2022. Um, so, the, you know, the first four months of last year that we're looking at uh, about 190 room, my, room nights, $30 million in terms of room revenue and 3.3, uh, 11% of that in hotel occupancy tax. 
And, so and speaking of mil yeah, and speaking of military and military spending, that's the big the big money is coming in, and particularly in military construction. Yeah. Uh, that's that's a, a, a lot of when I was writing the report, that amount was really, uh, you know, it's it's the biggest I've seen because uh, for this particular report, I actually had to build the table of the projects and how much it costs. So going to about four thousand pages of the NDAA fiscal year twenty twenty three, and tracking as much as I can, and it came out to be one point seven billion dollars worth of military projects for Guam for fiscal year twenty twenty three. Now, I realize that every time you do these analysis, it's always a question that do we actually see, do, uh, uh, does all this amount uh, show up, actually show up on Guam and get spent here? And I know that's uh, some of the concerns in our community of who ends up with the contracts, right? Are they on island or off island? Because so if you were to measure the impact of military spending, you do need to find out you know, if the money made it here in the first place, uh, I'd like to think, um, and again, this is a bit tricky, I wish I had more information, that if we have off-island contractors, though, a lot of times they do set up a, a, a presence here. And then it becomes a question of how many were they able to employ in their local office and how much do they buy from the local, you know, the local suppliers. And as you know, uh, in general, anyway, we import, we, we import quite a bit here, 60%. Uh, from other sources, so so I guess, uh, but but the number speaking speaking of that, the number is really quite an increase to again one point seven billion dollars fiscal year twenty twenty three compared to less than eight hundred million. Uh, that, so it's an extra one billion dollars uh, on military spending here. Yeah, but but as as you kind of allude to, um, of the one point seven billion, how much is that stays here and trickles down uh, into the local economy? Yeah. Yes, and and so that's always. That's always a, a good one to measure. I try my best to estimate it. I don't have all the information uh, to, to come up with a figure. I welcome other people that have more information on getting this done because uh, that really ends up being the question of what is the true contribution of the military to the local economy because and you know it's not only the money that gets spent here, obviously the jobs that are created in the process and also the taxes that are paid from the military projects. So uh, you know it's uh, it's not a question of whether we it's good news or bad news. It's, I think it's a question of quantifying it and putting it in the right context. Sure. And, and, and there are indications that um, in addition to the main project that's been going on for the last several years, the Marine Corps base camp laws, um, they're also going to be additional spending, huge amounts um, for a missile defense system for Guam. That is correct. And that's included in the 1.7 billion. I listed that uh, as one of the, uh, so I didn't limit it to just military construction projects. Uh, that's included in there. And uh, um, there's a, a wonderful document that I work with, which is uh, publish, obviously published by DOD and it's the Pacific uh, Deterrence Initiative. And it did break down, you know, uh, the goals of the program. It specified the uh, the um, uh, gosh the the military defense agency and tracking how much spending is going to happen. the the report The report shared budget for the next until fiscal year twenty twenty seven. So again, it's there's it's, some of them are broken down to spe specifying what Guam is expected to get or what's budgeted for Guam. But some of them are kind of just general categories. So uh, it's, you know, it's always very difficult to pin down what amount we're looking at exactly, not to mention the earlier discussion that we have that do we actually get them on island and, you know, and um, uh, generate an impact on our economy here. Yeah, but, just um, yeah, but that's one of the main, uh, that's one of the main part of the defense spending. And I know that our community split on that issue, because uh, every time you talk about missile, I mean, it's serious matter. It's obviously serious matter. Um, so um, I feel myself out of uh, out of lane on on that discussion. So uh, you know, I, I apologize that I tend to just focus. Obviously, I'm an economist, right? So right. I like to focus on the economic aspect, the funds that come in and circulate, and the jobs that are created from the process. Uh, we are happy, we are uh, lucky uh, in our community that we have experts who could, um, you know, give us more information, more details than I'll ever be able to give you. So, yeah. You. Yeah. When it comes to that missile defense system, you know, the argument is that uh, it's good that we have one. 
it's bad that we have to have one. Yeah. Because that, that means we're a target. Yeah. Yes. But, but but keep in mind, it's the same that what people say and not to bash the insurance industry, but this is the same thing that people say about insurance. It's something that you want to make sure that you have, but you don't really want to use. Right. So it's the same. It's the same philosophy. Absolutely. OK, one more break and then uh, we're going to wrap it all up with uh, Dr. Maria Claret Roy from the University of Guam. Please stay with us. All right, everyone, and uh, we're back for our final segment with Dr. Maria Claret Wayne. Um, Dr. Claret, uh, what would then be your overall economic forecast for 2023? Very tough question, Nestor, that you <laughs> asked me. <laughs> uh, let's put it this way. Um, it, this report's a bit difficult to write because uh, I'm not sure if I could forecast 2023 exactly, unless I just say something a little bit more general. As I've mentioned before, our economy has been recovering since 2021. So if that is the case, then I would think that we recovered some more in 2022, where we'll recover some more in 2023. So if you're willing to accept that term of just some more, because I, I'm not able to put numbers, you know, is will it recover a lot or or 1.1% or something like that. It's hard for me to say. However, um, I have to say that when I looked at the 2021 experience, I'm actually, as I mentioned, I'm disappointed. I wish we had, I was expecting more growth from our economy, uh, which makes me wonder if, um, you know, uh, when I first, uh, about 10 years ago, that was my forecast for Guam is I use the term stable and I usually use it in quotes because it's actually euphemism for the fact that we're growing every year, which is great, about 1% growth, but it's it could be better. Every time it could be better. So it's stable, it doesn't change much. And um, until I see the 2022 estimate, I, I can't shake off the feeling that we might be going back to that. And you understand, I don't want to, if it's my choice. I don't want to, uh, because we've seen that before, where every year it's it's the same, uh, you know, tourism's picked up, but the military or the federal funds went down. So it's always one compensating for the other. 2019 was great in, in the right context because our economy grew at 2.6%. How did that happen? Strong tourism, 1.6 million visitors, large amount of federal funds, not just military, but overall federal funds. And then our economy, our, our local businesses, our consumers were pretty strong. Then the job numbers were pretty decent. That if we could replicate that, then we could at least make it to about that what that is, two point six percent. So, so um, looking at the larger economy, though, uh, I'm so I'm always looking for the big push to get to shake us off of that stable one percent growth rate, and uh, I did not. So I don't know exactly what that big push is going to be. So I invite our local community. What would that big push be to get us out of this stable, almost just 1%, almost zero growth every year to something more than that? We need that third, yeah, we need that third stool of the economy that we've always been talking about for, for years. And uh, it has yet to materialize, but hopefully, you know, the, the leaders are working on that. Well, let's put it this way. I welcome more legs to the stool which is the economy we're talking about, you know, new industries, uh, welcoming them certainly would, would be great. And so, uh, you know, uh, the four, all of these will be forecasted as they come along and looking for a, a, you know, a more positive growth than we've experienced so far. All right. Dr. Maria Claret Ruane of the University of Guam, Professor of Economics, thank you so much for joining us and for sharing your Guam Economic Report for 2022. Thank you so much, Nestor. Thank you so much to the Guam community. Have a good, uh, have a good day. Have a, a happy new year. All right. I'm Nestor Leconte. Thanks for watching, everyone. We'll see you again next week on The Hub.